Hey again, my beautiful art-loving friends. Today I'm in Porto and um, I just came over to uh, what's considered the Arts District uh, based on um, a blog that I read and I took the wrong bus. I ended up having to hike for about mm, 15 minutes to get over here and Google Maps is a disaster. Sorry for the noise. I hate Google Maps with a passion. Every time I try to go somewhere, the arrow is pointed in the wrong direction. And I always have to ask somebody anyway. Maybe I'm just an idiot, I don't know. But anyway, I did not have an easy time getting over here. And um, honestly, I have to say first impressions are that, you know, are not wonderful. It's completely different than what I expected. And maybe it's because, you know, it's just a very, very old city. And uh, maybe once I get up and start walking and uh, looking around, I'll find interesting and exciting things. Uh, the blog that I read said that there was some uh, nice street art. And I expected there to be a lot. Uh, I really only can see a little bit. But you'll walk with me and discover as I discover. Okay. Um, I think I do see a gallery or two across the street. So I'll start over there after, um, you know what, wine o'clock. <laughs> really, uh, you know, hey, when in Rome, right? Uh, I'm in Porto where they make magnificent uh, port wine. And uh, just the culture in, in uh, Portugal in general is to relax, have a, little, have a little sip of wine or two and enjoy your life enjoy your day so that's what we're doing um so yeah when i'm done uh we're gonna go walk around uh the arts district in porto and see what we see all right stay with me okay okay kids i finished my wine and we're gonna leave this cute little cafe now and uh venture across the street and see if those are indeed art galleries that we're looking at that looks like one that looks like one Let's go see about this here arts district. I'm gonna turn the camera around here so you can have a look. Okay, so this is Rua de Miguel, I think, uh, Miguel Bambaros here in Porto. And let's go over here. Looks like that's an antique store. You know, in the United States, when there's, we say we have an arts district, 
you know, generally there's a bunch of art galleries together. Um, maybe some handmade artists outside, cafes, big sign that says art district. But uh, they're keeping it pretty well hidden here. The famous garage. Okay. Take a break. Looks like just another restaurant. Oh, man. Okay. Just looks like an antique shop. Second hand over there. Maybe I'm on the wrong street. <laughs> I don't know. This is not like what I expected at all. Ah, uh, here we go. An art gallery. Look, found one. Yay. Okay. Now I'll have to. I'm just going to ask if it's okay if I film inside. Be right back. Okay. Hey, everybody. I found a gallery. All right. So uh, I also found. Orico, 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 and Monica. Okay, and what is the name of this gallery? Uh, yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> and this this street is Rua Miguel Bomberos. Bombarda. Bombarda. Okay, so I, I said it sort of almost correctly. <laughs> okay, so in this gallery, um, uh, are these local artists? Uh, no, it's not local. Uh, Portuguese artist, uh, this one from this side, and uh, that one is from Mozambique. Oh, Ruben Zakiriet, but he's living already here in Porto for a couple of years now. Okay, but uh, so this whole wall, yeah, is the gentleman from great. Mozambique. Yes. Okay, and then this is this one. This is also from him. Uh huh. That one in the middle, left side, it's from. Luis of Porto, and it's from a Portuguese artist, uh, but not local, near Porto. Okay, so we have two artists in here. Yes. Basically. Okay, so this is all Mozambique man, and I will I will highlight his name on the tags because I can't say it. <laughs> but these are uh, these are quite beautiful and textural, colorful, very cool. Uh, oh, Ruben Zacharias, that's not so hard. Okay. It only sounds exciting with the Portuguese accent. <laughs> it only sounds more difficult to me that way. <laughs> it's lovely. And is this gentleman very well known? Um, uh, no, it's starting. He's a self-made artist. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I mean, come yeah, on. He <laughs> doesn't have any degree or study in the university. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, well, that's me that's too. We say self-made. Yes, okay. <laughs> So this gentleman is uh, self-taught like I am, but his work is obviously very much different. I like his images. So much action in there. I'm not going to stop at every piece here. I'm just going to give you like a, an overview of this gentleman's work <clears throat> as we go along uh, the galleries here now that we found them. Oh, and we'll have to find out who this is back here. Ooh. Okay, these are obviously not the same people, so... Let's see what's going on here. Uh, 
Huh, kind of interesting cartoons. Maybe you see something you like and you can come to Porto and buy it, make an artist happy. <laughs> oh, that's pretty neat. So reminiscent of the, uh, oh, so many of the churches that I saw in Rome and Lisbon and all the uh, Byzantine and gold mosaics. Not so much in Lisbon, but in, in Rome and Sicily. Okay, so this is Portuguese artist Luis Oporto. Oporto? Yeah, it looks like, yeah, Oporto. So he is not from Porto, but he is Portuguese. I would really, really love to hear your thoughts about the pieces that you're looking at here. I'd love for you to um, tell me your opinion in the comments. Uh, maybe ask questions if you see something like that I could answer a question about. Okay, here's art on a shopping bag, on a grocery bag, paper bag, sure, why not? We would call this outsider art. Um, yeah, tell me what you think. Like, I'm, I'm loving doing this because it makes me feel like I'm not really traveling alone because I'm sharing with you everything that I'm seeing. Not everything. Um, but I'm um, sharing a lot with you. And if you comment and tell me what you're thinking, then we can really, really um, have, a, have a dialogue here and, you know, exchange our thoughts and ideas. Isn't it a wonderful world we live in that we can do this? Okay, all right, so this was a cool drop in. Now let's, uh, let's make our way up the street and see what else is around. Thank you so much, Monica. You're welcome. Um, can you uh, tell me the name of the gallery again? Okay. It's, uh, I have a card here. Yeah. And I think it's in here. Okay. Here. Hermesins do Porto. Okay, and you have, okay, you're on Instagram and everything. So I will, uh, when I post this, I'll tag you. Thank okay, you so Would, much. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think we are now on the trail of some galleries here in the art district in Porto. So uh, let's mosey across the street. I see some people, some things going on over there. Okay, kids, so here we are at this uh, wonderful gallery, uh, Cruces Canjoto. It's, uh, as you can see, it's uh, home to art brute and art brute primitive and popular art, which is popular art is uh, what they call outsider art. Uh, they don't say folk art, um, but that's, that's the name that they use in Portugal to describe the work of untrained artists, people um, from different countries, um, uh, people in different civilizations that are making art that is very unfamiliar to us, um, but is really, uh, as the director explained to me, he won't, he won't come on camera, but he explained to me that these, these kind of images, these kind of pieces um, uh, come from, come from um, you know, ancient untrained people. Like you see the, uh, is that a, uh, I, I forget the name of that one there, but it's from the Native American culture. But these, are, these pieces are raw, they're straight out of the imagination. They are um, usually uh, unfettered by tradition or um, you know outside ideas of what they should be they tell stories this, um, you know they uh, depict special people you see these are probably tribal man and woman that maybe were very important where they came from and so here we have uh, the names of the exhibit um, this is a clama figures fetiche yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so these uh, it, these figures 
you know, you can you can tell they're man and woman because you know, woman woman has the the boobs. But down here, this is woman represented also. Um, so these are you know these are people who are carving and making things straight out of their imagination and experience. They're not held to any certain aesthetic. Their aesthetic is one that is understood by uh, a, you know ancient culture around them, um, or they might even be modern cultures in uh, remote places in um, say around Africa different countries around there. The Portuguese Portuguese um, have been around and conquered a number of countries, Angola being one of them. And so there are a lot of people here that I've come across that are from Angola because they, uh, as a territory or whatever of Portugal, they have dual citizenship. So there's very strong tie to the African continent. And so this museum is, is completely, not museum, gallery. <laughs> this gallery is completely dedicated to um, art brute, popular art, as we said. Um, some of the uh, first images that we saw, the devils, um, we'll go back and talk about that in a minute. Um, but much of this art is also um, from Portugal, up in the north. Look at this collection. How amazing are these masks? Wow. So imagine you're, you know, someone living in a, in a remote village or something and you, um, you know, you only have certain amounts of materials around you and you're trying to express a feeling or tell a story about who you are, where you live. Like this, this might be a perfect example. Uh, I believe this is all beaded. Look at that. Uh, for all we know, this could be a self-portrait. This could be someone important in the community. Um, this could be a religious figure. But that's how these things, these things are just, you know, made by hand with primitive tools, making primitive art to tell the story of their lives. And that's a lot of what art is about. It's telling our story, being remembered. Now in this gallery, um, there are a number of outsider paintings. I'm gonna start over here. I don't remember this gentleman's name, um, but this is a favorite of the curator. That painting is actually on a cardboard. This is, uh, let's see. Mar Mar Martino? I don't know. Oh, there he is, Martino. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, the person that I was speaking with said, was saying that uh, he, the way he paints, he's completely self-taught and he uses his painting to work out his problems. Um, so he just, he will stew and stew and stew on, on a problem and as he works through a painting, he generally ends up fixing his problem. This person here they call ZMB. This is um, someone who had definite emotional problems. Uh, his work is, as you can see, very Van Gogh-like. Um, I would say that most of us artists, you know, might have, have some kind of emotional problem, maybe, you know, it's to what degree. But because we are creatives and we tend to see the world in different ways. We have um, big feelings, we, in, we internalize a lot, um, and I think that's why some artists end up uh, like this, maybe trying to, apparently this guy tried to commit suicide many times, which is really sad. And then we, you know, we know about Van Gogh also. And this is Isaac. And this gallery, I have to say, is really wonderful. They are so dedicated to these artists, to bringing their work to the world, that uh, when they did a show of someone who was um, coming up in just a few minutes here, they actually, they, they bought the work to sell so that the artist didn't have to worry about, uh, you know, 
did my work sell? Did anything sell? No, they just they just bought it. And so when he came to the opening, um, yeah, he wanted things to sell, but not for the money. He already had the money. He wanted things to sell to feel accepted. Uh, these are some of the pieces. These are by Miguel Pipa. Pipa. These are the pieces that I'm talking about where the, um, the gallery bought, bought them. And I'm assuming that there are others that have already sold. So he, this guy, I guess, believes that he has, um, he has, um, mm, what are they, microscopic animals or something floating up above his head. And you can see, see these, this is all a uh, marker. And he's got his little Wi-Fi box there, which is kind of funny. But, you know, the statement is that, you know, you're, you're connected. You're connected to all these all these unseen things. Like for all we know, these could be, this could be what Wi-Fi looks like, right? <laughs> we can't see it. It's very interesting work. And even, even just this pattern, it's, it's really beautiful. Look at that, you move away and it's just really textural. And then when you move in, so much detail, so beautiful. Um, I think that the curator said that this guy was also schizophrenic, or, um, oh wait, we can go and look at his story because he did, he did have a lot of emotional problems and he started painting, or drawing, I guess I would call this, drawing on canvas. So he was born in 1980 in Coxinas, a peculiar fisherman's neighborhood, an academic education. He's never had an academic education. Okay, we will read that soon. Okay, I'm gonna edit that out. Okie dokie. And then we have this guy who, okay, this is a guy who created, uh, okay, who created this sculpture here which is a junk sculpture and it's uh, some sardine cans and a bunch of other things. And it's meant as a uh, kind of as a monster protector for us against, um, I don't know, alien invasion or whatever. <laughs> and here we have uh, another piece of junk sculpture that he created uh, where the American bomber is coming in and she's, she's a beguiling woman. <laughs> so the same person uh, never painted before in his life. They asked him to give it a whirl, I guess, and this is the result. And this is, I believe this work is on wood, yes. And this uh, is definitely what you would call mixed medium. Um, I can't get out far enough to, wait, there we go. There we go. Let's see if I can get you the whole thing, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing work. Lots of layers and layers of looks like crayon, acrylic, oil paints. Um, they definitely give you a sense of, I don't know, to me, they give me a sense of upset. And uh, this one's very angry. This one is, I don't know. Tell me, tell me in the comments. What is this one? What do you think about this art? What do you think about quote unquote outsider art or what in Portugal they call popular art? Is this good art to you? Does it make you feel anything? Does it make you think anything in particular? Um, wow, here's another one, a big one here. It's a big one of the other gentlemen there. Wow. Overall, a very, very interesting gallery. The, um, the owner was also telling me that the, these uh, figures that look like devil figures, that these are actually not meant to be such, that these are figures made by women and they are made sort of like against the patriarchy because like this one is about women having children and um, how it looks like how they are sort of overtaken by, by the women or I mean by the kids and um, you know, the tongue is out to say, hey, you know, they, they don't have any voice. Um, and the same thing with this one up here. 
also, and I believe he said that these are made by um, Portuguese women up in the north. So uh, that's pretty much it. I think I've um, probably mangled half the things that he told me about uh, the pieces in here, but uh, I will be posting the, their website with all kinds of information about uh, the gallery and the pieces. And I would really encourage you to uh, go and have a look if you want to learn more about these and um, get the correct story. But I just wanted to introduce you to this very, very cool um, art brute, popular outsider art gallery. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And this book, I just wanted to show you real quick. This is a book that was written about this gallery, about the collection um, of uh, Portuguese popular art. So if you're ever in a bookstore and you want to get something cool to read, learn more about it. There you go. Okay.